from apples to bark. What? I was probably supposed to say apples, wasn't I? I don't know. I just. Apples to apples, apples to oranges, apples to something that makes sense to connecting to apples. <laughs> I just did the first thing that pops into my head. I'm sorry. Okay, so while you were gone, I uh, listened to this entire thing. It was so trash that I threw it in the trash where it belonged and then covered it so it couldn't get back out. I also already checked out the closet, so uh, you're going to have to deal with not being there for that. Mm. Did you read, um, Sam's cool first stories? Yep. It was, uh, top tier. Yo. Yeah, Allegra one of, is, This uh, game has character. one of the best pieces of literature. I think we're gonna run into it soon. We already have. Sorry, Captain Allegra. Fucking bar okay. and library. Again. No I want to read the um, perfect piece of literature, though. Okay. So more whiskey. I'm not sure. Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I want to inform you that unfortunately, Mercury Books will be unable to publish publish your follow up to the accidental pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accidental Savior, we went ahead with publication of the second book in the hopes of the John Russell series catching on. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It has been a pleasure working as your publisher, and we wish you and John Russell the best in your future endeavors. I always knew he was shitty. What? What? Nothing. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Vodka. Vixa. Vodka. Vixa Vodka. It's a brand. A record player. Mm. Oh yeah, let's get turned, bitch. Mm. <laughs> you played the sound. I think the perfect piece of literature is right here. We're gonna call that good. Textbook. Pyramids. That's how you know it's history. There we go. Here we go. Alright, I'm gonna read it. Reproductive System Worksheet 6. Basically, they just have to write all of these things in, like, order. Like, they can pick one, though. Go over. <clears throat> Overlay text also, please. <sighs> I'm not reading all this, Gabe. It's just telling them what Fine. they have to do. The early morning of September 1st, 1939, Essa Glatz stares out at the window of the train as it travels from Vienna back to her home village of Way Wayland in Poland. As the train rumbles along and the sun rises over the countryside, she can only think of her dear Borislav, the boy she is engaged to wed. Meanwhile, deep within her guts, an ovum starts to develop. As this train approaches its destination, her heart races, the lining of her uterus is getting thick and soft. As Essa steps off the train, her eyes dart quickly across the gathered crowd. Then there, her dear Boris, still in his baker smock. He must have dropped his early morning duties at his father's shop to come meet her. Her heart skips a beat. The ovary releases its ovum. It travels through the fallopian tube. Over the wheezing of okay. steam engines, a deep hum grows. It's coming from the sky. Dark shadows pass over the station. A whistling sound. Essa, her thoughts only a second faster than the bombs, reaches out toward her dear Boris across the crowd. Their eyes lock and the moment freezes. The flash and smoke envelops him almost instantly. In the assault by German forces, almost 75% of the people in her hometown are killed. The rest, including Essa and for a time, Borislav, huddle in a half-destroyed church. His... He is blind, his legs are missing, bandaged with torn bedsheets. Essa's eggs will not be meeting a sperm. It dissolves. About two weeks later, Boris loses his grip on life. Essa has given up her rations to keep Boris alive, but in the end, nothing can save him. Since the lining of the uterus is not needed for a pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. Essa vows to survive. She sets off to join the Polish resistance as a daring spy and saboteur. 
Another ovum starts to develop in one of the ovaries and the process begins again. It is incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. And then the teacher just said, see me. <laughs> um. <laughs> She's such a good storyteller. Aww. She wants to be a writer like her daddy. This. Yeah, exactly like her daddy. That's the problem. I check out the closet. I it's a good just, piece. It's I, one of the best pieces of literature. Sure. More of Dad's books. Why does he keep them in here? What's that note? Second. Okay. I want to see if I could take those out. I put this on here. Samantha. Samantha, please give this to your mother. Okay. You can read this. Thank you for having Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Danny asked if he could want Samantha in his Nintendo Street Fighting tape, and I gave my permission. He needs to spend less time with those games anyway. No hurry returning it. Let Samantha know that she is welcome back to our house to visit anytime. Sincerely, Mary Schutz. When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. Yep. And Daniel only got weirder over nope. the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. <laughs> but he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. I'm saying she has both, isn't it? So she ain't messing with no one that doesn't have a Nintendo. Hi, Lonnie. So if you want to come over to my house still, the afternoon would be cool. This afternoon would be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far, but I can drive you home too, so hopefully that's fine. Right back and leave this in my locker if you still want to, and we can meet in the parking lot after 6. What? After 6th? Whatever. Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there. Then I'm going to kick your butt. Get ready. American lingo. Oh. Oh. So you know what they say about the best light plans of mice and men? Yeah, it turns out it applies to Street Fighter 2. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked, I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the psycho house. Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Ooh. Katie, please, whatever you found, don't tell mom and dad. The attic. So. Okay. Now we get to go upstairs. Keep that in mind for later. Who the hell locks rooms in a house? People? I don't know. When you got this big of mansion, maybe. Make more sense. Mansion, quote unquote. It is. Do you not see how fucking big this house is? Yes, it is. It is a quite big two-story building. Three-story. It's got a basement. Still a mansion. It was referred to as a two-story. Okay. Controlled burn scheduled for Boone County. Boats of smoke will rise above the northeastern region of Boone County over the better part of next week. As part of the Forestry Service run controlled burn of uh what it does matter. I'm preparing the the genus Wait. When is this? Scheduled burn. Controlled burn. No, I said when. When is this taking place? Mm. It already has. No, I oh yeah, it's uh June sixth, right. Mm-hmm. Read personal planner. Monday, couples bowling. Wednesday, cooking class. Take apron. Friday, ballroom dancing. Monday, couples. Uh, cook the big meal for Terry and Sam. What are you doing? Nothing. Alright, I want to read this one. Overlay it, please. 
Notice of temporary personal personnel transfer to aid in the upcoming prescribed burn operation. A ranger with expertise in the procedure is being transferred to the station at Flintlock National Forest. Effective September 2nd, 1994. Please see attached personnel file. The overseeing officer of Flintlock Forest is Jason Senior Conservative. Conservationist Janice Greenbrier is charged with the supervision of transfer personnel. The duration of transfer will be based upon performance and evaluation, as well as recommendation of the overseeing officer. Signed, Bruce Pendleton. Okay. Oh, might want to turn the lights on, my dude. I found a cassette tape. You found a cassette tape case. Did I? Mm -hmm. oh. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? Sam's gay. I don't know. What? But being around Lonnie huh? is like What'd you say? instantly just right. I gave her the grand psycho house tour and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know. I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, You have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. Yeah, um... <laughs> Sam, stop waving your damn light on the house in the house on. You're as bad as your read sister. Read the note next to that? I want to read it. Uh... Yeah. No, not those two. You can read those, though. Did you read those sticky notes? It, it doesn't matter. They're around screen. I, Samantha Graham, to whom it may concern, I, Samantha Grambar, am 17 years old and am therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is frankly absurd, compared with Katie, who is only three years older than me. And that's why I said Katie was 17, uh, 20. Yeah, I know. And yet you've allowed her to go all the way across another, an ocean to another continent on her own. I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe city on my own like a human being. And since you may also remember that I have my own car now, you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter, Samantha. Okay. The notes, by the way, basically just say that um, Daniel called me and wants a Super Nintendo game back. Yes, I already know. Go into this room Our first. Viewers. Hey Sam, you want to see Pulp Fiction after school at the Coliseum? It came out last weekend, and Todd won't shut up about it. So it's either so it's either good or we can make fun of him for liking it. Let me it. read the other one. My mom's supposed me, to because it's like two people. My mom's supposed. Gabe, it's two people. My mom's supposed to cook dinner for us tonight. For yeah, see, my mom's supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for a change, but I can just ditch out on it probably. What time is it? Also, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I gonna bark? According to Todd, it was pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle, so it's kind of hilarious. And something about cheeseburgers is important. I think Todd's going to be going to come, so he can see it again if that's okay. 7.15, okay? Don't barf. All right, see you then. This is... Can you guess whose room this is? The light's on the other side also. It's rude to go in rooms loud, Stark. You're gonna trip and kill yourself. Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, probably. You don't need to read all this. You do not need to read all this. Yeah. We're it's just, just a summer program for a bunch of different subjects, and she wanted to go for the. I left it on the screen long enough for somebody to pause and read it if they okay. wanted to. Go back over towards the door, and like. Inspect everything near the door. Emery board. I'm gonna go do my nails. Gabe. There, I did my nails. They are fucking fabulous! Another three ring binder, this family loves them. Fuck Sam. It's mine now. Dude. Dude. For real. <laughs> it's mine. Sam doesn't get any. 
I'm ready then. I really wish there was like some kind of button to make me go faster. Why, t to be fair, why would you run in your own house? I do that all the time. chun -Li moves. Fireball is... Left... Hold, well, hold left, right, punch. Or left, hold, right, punch? I don't remember. Lightning kick is kick, 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 kick. Helicopter is... Helicopter kicks down, up, kick. Air stomp is... Yeah, we're just gonna call that good. Look at it! Who the fuck took away Adventures the Cat? Returns. That's probably where she had a Nintendo. I want. Where's the Nintendo? Don't play the cassette! Why? Uh, in one video I watched, someone said that one was copyrighted. I'm sticking in to hear what it sounds like. Gabe, there was the cassette upstairs! The cassette player in her room! Oh, I actually didn't see that. It was right on top of that dresser! We're so cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're so cool, cool. We're so cool, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, too! Cool schmuck! <laughs> I like it. It doesn't go in the trash. <laughs> Literally, you're gonna go back to that dresser to look through the drawers and you're gonna see the fucking giant ass cassette player on top. I actually remember it now that I'm thinking about it, but I was imagining like an older cassette player like that one, not like a radio style one. Yeah, I wasn't imagining this, I was imagining the other thing. I like how all these clothes are literally just pictures. <laughs> yep. Make it harder for her to clean up. You ever think your sister might be deranged? More games! Super Spitfire! Journey, Journey of Crystal. Crystal. Was there another one around here? No. I thought there was for some reason. Hi, Lonnie. I wrote this in first period and left it on your locker on the way to second. It's what all the cool kids are doing. I've decided. Write me back. Also, here's an idea for something to draw. Two cats on a motorcycle. Hey, this is a good idea. What all the cool kids are doing is actually sending each other pages on their beeper. But we're cool than the beca than them because guess what? They can't put this on a beeper. <laughs> yep. You didn't finish it. Oh, I did. Your drawing of a cat was even was so good that I added background to make it even better. Maybe I should just stick to writing though. <laughs> I like it. How do you know they were going to get abducted by aliens? I'm looking at Mi Mr. Pfish right now. I feel like you probably have a lot of cats. Also, like his secret streams that watches 90210 religiously. I'm going to ask him about the cats after class. Is that the same? You, yeah. Okay. He said he have two cats and also that he's never watched 90210. But I could see in his eye he was lying. <laughs> We're gonna get that at some point, so don't worry about it. What are you doing? What? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't remember what that combination was downstairs. Maybe that was 4051. But it's not the same. 0451. Turn the lid on real quick. Wait. Man, Sam had this in like fourth grade. Had it past tense. So yeah, that box represents all the stuff that Sam's grown out of. Had it past tense. Yes, but I want you to see what it's else is in now. that box when you 
look in it. You have to wait. I know. It's mine. Oh yeah. Fucking kleptomaniac. <laughs> she doesn't get any binders. I should have left her just that binder though, so she had to bring that to school. Would have been funny. Eh, whatever. It's mine now. She's unworthy. So the box is all the stuff that she feels like she's grown out of, which includes that binder and I, I feel like this is offensive to some people. I mean, it probably is, but her mom and dad are pretty religious. They have, um, I think there's a Bible somewhere else in the house that we missed. And I think there are two more that you can find. Captain Oyer is still in her flowing skirt and sturdy j jerkin? Mm -hmm. The fuck is a jerkin? Well, it is a pickle, but I'm pretty sure it's also like a um, corset type thing. Descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and the first mate on their own now grew closer to their goal. The throne room of the dead Im immortal king- what? Dead immortal? What? <laughs> King of the island. The first mate slid down the line under the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas tra trousers and looked up at Allegra. The silken thread, nigh unbreakable, thanks to the enchanted moss that inhabited the island, trailed behind, leading their way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and dearer, the king's cursed voice. The hairs on Captain Allegra's arms stood on end. She looked back at the first mate, whose eyes remained locked in the blackness of the passage for a moment too long before noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently ahead. The great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below. Skeletal... Skeletal and rotted robes. Skeleton. Skeleton. Skeletal. I don't know. Okay, yeah, skeletal and rotten robes. The king was, oh, it was a descriptor. The king was haunched over a blue orb topped his royal scepter. As he sang, wailing souls flowed into one, one by one through the cracks in the cave walls, pulled into the orb, causing it to glow brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase, hewn from rock, led down to the chamber for, from a passage at the top. Allegra said, We have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention and then you, but the first mate interrupted. No, I'm smaller and quicker, and you know of dealing with mystic energies like this. I will circle the one side and get the king's attention, and lead him to a merry chase. She held up the silk line, all traced by the invisible thread, of course. It is a good plan, but perhaps we should go for together. The first mate shook her head. You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warm. The first mate tied the shining thread to the to the belt of her trousers gave a quick salute and a wink and dashed off also this is just a way to say that sam's actually gay allegra waited staring vigilantly across at the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear the king continued his wait no no the singing stopped the king turned and began walking up the stairs allegra wanted to call out to do anything to stop the first mate from running headfirst in danger the king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway she skittled to a stop then turned and ran the king chased chasing after her with distressing speed from some dank passage much too far away allegra heard the first mate scream and uh that i guess was the scream stupid controller it felt slack. Uh, what was the that? line? In uh, the hand. line in Allegra. Yes, I know. I was trying to find it. The line in Allegra's hand went tout, then shuddered. It felt slack. It fell slack to the stone floor. Allegra ran, following the line, and came to its end. The unbreakable thread dangled limply. Its end frayed in her hand. She tossed it to the ground. Ran, ran, ran. There's something on top of that, by the way. Well. Now what? Uh. Yeah, give me a second. <laughs> you spin me right round, baby, right round.
Uh. What? What? I was. I was just up there. Oh. Well, that's weird. So, um, look at the top of the thing. No. But, and that was weird. 